Using BookBolt, you can make high quality puzzle books, which you can then list and sell on Amazon KDP. In this video, I'm gonna walk through exactly how you can make a puzzle book in just minutes using the BookBolt software. Let's jump in. Okay, if you've never heard of BookBolt before, today's your lucky day. I'm gonna walk through this really cool software. I'll put a link to BookBolt in the video description below. Just a heads up, it is an affiliate link. That just means if you purchase the BookBolt subscription, I would receive a small commission. So here we are on the main page and you're gonna see a little menu here on the top left-hand side. Right now it's under research and that gets me a bunch of research tools so I can look up high quality books that are selling on Amazon. I'm gonna click this little research button and a little drop down menu is gonna happen. I'm gonna click create. Now from here I have two options, BookBolt Studio and BookBolt Mass Cover Converter. I'm gonna click on BookBolt Studio. Okay, so if you've already been working on a book, you're gonna have your book open up when you're inside of BookBolt Studio. But if you wanna create a new project, you're gonna go up here to the top left and click project and then new project. From here, you're gonna to get to choose what type of project you would like. Now, typically I go for co paperback, cover, and interior, but you could do a hardcover book as well. Really what you wanna do is a cover and an interior, usually at the same time. So I'm gonna click on that. My project name is going to be Puzzle Book. For my trim size, I'm gonna pick eight by 10 inches, but you can pick different sizes here. There's small, there's large. I'm gonna do eight by 10. And then for my interior and paper type, I typically go with black and white interior with a cream paper, but there are other options there as well. From here, you want to pick your page count. This is important. Now you can change this later on, but typically I start with a 100 page book and I can go more or less if I need to. And I'm going to click create project. All right. And you're going to get a blank page now, which is your cover. So you're going to see this template and then you're going to see different pages on the left hand side. So this is your actual book. If I scroll down on the left hand side, you're going to see it go all the way down to page 100 and then it stops. So page 100 is my final page in my book. I'm gonna scroll right back up to the beginning. I'm gonna click on my cover and I could create my cover or I could create interior pages inside my book. If you'd like to see all of this on one page, there's a little eyeball right here. If you click the eyeball, that will give you a book view or a list view. So you can do a small view, a large view, or even a book view, which is two pages at a time. And you can scroll through the book as if it was, you were holding it in your hand. I like list view large typically to start off. So you're gonna pick a page and then you're gonna insert puzzle pieces into each of the pages. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do right on page one is we're going to insert a puzzle. So this is very easy to do, although it looks somewhat intimidating if it's your first time. So I'm gonna walk you through this step by step. On the left-hand side, there's a little menu here and you're gonna look for this icon. It's a little maze and it's called page templates. I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna see a whole bunch of different templates that I can populate in my book. So these are the baseline templates that I can use. So I'm gonna go here right to the top and I'm gonna see there's word puzzle and maze. So I could specify just mazes or I could specify just word puzzles. So I'm gonna include just the two of those at the top. And now I can scroll through these and decide what I would like to use. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is word search standard right here. I'm gonna click it. Now I'm gonna select what page I would like for this to go on. So nothing happens until I select my page. I'm gonna pick page one and that's gonna populate my Word page. I could always move this around by the way. I could always pick more than one page or once it's set and I insert my puzzle, I could move the pages around. So right now I'm gonna put it on page one to start and I'm gonna click continue to options. From here, you're gonna see a whole bunch of different options. And this can be a little bit intimidating at times if you're not sure. So what I'd recommend is you can look at each individual piece separately. You'll see there's three sections here. And now right at the top, it says words per puzzle. So I'm gonna do 10 words in my puzzle and I've got diagonal words selected. From here, I'm gonna expand my first section, which is puzzles. How many puzzles per page do I want? I want one puzzle per page. I want it in the middle of the page. I've selected my font and I've selected my text size, which is the default. In fact, I'm gonna leave the default here on all of these different artistic choices. I'm going to go now to my solution. I've got how I would like my solution to look. I'm just gonna leave all this the exact same as up above. And now for my title, I'm gonna use my first line as title because I'm gonna be uploading a spreadsheet that includes all my information. You might be wondering, well, how does it know what words to put in? Well, I'm gonna tell it right now. All right, so you wanna open up Excel and you're gonna use a CSV file, which is just a type of spreadsheet. So here I've created a spreadsheet with a title and then 10 cities 
inside of Canada. So the name of my puzzle is Cities of Canada. I've then got 10 cities listed and I'll simply save this now as a CSV file and then I'll upload it on BookBolt. So I'm happy with my simple Excel file. I'm going to upload it right here. Choose CSV file. It's now uploaded and I can preview my 11 rows right here. And when I preview the 11 rows, I'm going to see my first row is my title and then I've got 10 pieces of data underneath it. I can close it out. Now there's a preview option as well. I can click preview and it'll show me both the puzzle and the solution. This is all random by the way. I didn't tell BookBolt where to put the solution pieces. So BookBolt does the heavy lifting here and actually creates the puzzle. I'm happy with that. I'm going to click continue to solution page. And now I need to pick where to put my solution. So some people, when they're building a book, they like to have 10 puzzles and then 10 solutions or 50 puzzles and 50 solutions. Some authors like to use a puzzle and then a solution, a puzzle and then a solution. So I'm going to do that, puzzle and then a solution. So I'm going to stick my solution number one right next to puzzle number one so that the reader can see it right away. And then from here, I'm going to click submit. Now BookBolt is going to generate the actual puzzle. So here it is. There's the puzzle. And then on page two, there's the solution. And then you can repeat this as many times as you like throughout your book. All right, so I've got my puzzle now on page one and page two, but what about the rest of the book? I'm gonna click this little eyeball button right here and it's going to show me the rest of my book. I've got a bunch of blank pages here that I need to fill in. This looks intimidating, right? A hundred pages, but I can fill this up very, very quickly. So what I'm gonna do next is pick whatever page I'd like to go on. For example, maybe page 10. So what am I gonna put on page 10? Well, I'm gonna click the little icon here that's page templates. I'm gonna pick now a puzzle, like a maze. So I'm gonna pick this circular maze, and now I'm gonna pick what page I would like for it to be on. I'm gonna pick page 10, page 12, page 15, and page 18, for example. And now I'm gonna to continue to options. You have a few different options here. My cell count, I'm gonna make this nice and big at 20. I'm gonna have one puzzle per page, align my page, and the line width is two. And the solution, I might have no solution for these. So I've got no solution listed. And then for my title, I'm just going to put no title. And then from here, I'm gonna click submit. And we'll see now, page number 10 has populated with a pretty complex looking maze. This could kill a few hours at the airport and you'll notice my other pages now, page 12 for example, has a totally different maze. These are not the same. These look similar, but they're not the exact same. Now I'm gonna to go to the little eyeball at the top and you'll see now I've got page 12, page 15 and page 18 and page 10, they all have mazes now on them. So you can populate the entire book with different types of designs. I hope you found this walkthrough helpful. I love using BookBolt. Link is in the video description below. Here's another video on how you can have some fun using this BookBolt software.